Okay, tak nanya? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Very good. Okay, here. So, good evening class. Uh, at least yeah, you're all here. So, uh, we are done with the uh, uh, module one. So, this is our second uh, module. So, hopefully each module we should be able to finish in uh, two to three meetings so that uh, uh, we will be spending only for, because there are only how many? There are only uh, uh, five modules that we are going to discuss so that uh, we only need about mga five to eight weeks to be able to wind up everything or maybe seven weeks, no? including exams. No? By the way, um, our, our exam will be every after the module, okay? Uh, please take note, our exam will be every after module. We are done with module one. That means I'm going to give you an exam for module one next week, okay? Hello? Noted, sir. Noted, sir. Okay, so your exam, no, your exam will be uh, given to you through email. So it's it's uh, essay, and then the, anyway, there are only three of you. You, I will uh, give you a time timetable for your exam. I will send you through email, and then you answer that and send it back to me uh, in within a specified time. Say, for example, if I'm going to give you one day for that exam. Uh, at the end of the day, you submit your exam no, through email. So that would be our arrangement. So every after, uh, ano, every after module, I'm going to, gi to give a check-up quiz or check-up exam. No? So, so that uh, that will be our arrangement. At the end of every, or after we have discussed all modules, that means also that we have uh, discussed everything. And we have, uh, uh, I have assessed everything also sa inyo na, no? So that uh, uh, maliban lang sa inyong learning task because the learning task will be uh, given at a specified schedule, no? So this time, no? This time, we will discuss on uh, module two. Uh, let me just remind the class nga uh, next week, okay? Next week, please check your email always. Now check your email always because I might just, or well, I will announce it through our group chat, but also I will send the exam through your email uh, so that uh, um, you would be able, you would be guided in terms of uh, when the email comes and then when are you going to submit your your answers. No, So please take note of that. So this... Uh, Evening, we are going to discuss on module two, and then uh, module two is about uh, the agribusiness environment. And then uh, after we are done, or we were done with module one, which is the introduction to agribusiness management or agribusiness. Now we discuss on the the environment. What we have discussed in module in module one was basically the basic understanding in terms of the definition of agribusiness and then the dimensions, the scope, and also the, uh, the characteristic of agribusiness. No? So this time we, were, we will go into a deeper understanding of the agribusiness environment. That the agribusiness environment actually we will, uh, uh, is are, are the, what we call as the uh, external i would say the external factors that really impact on the normal functioning of agribusiness okay there are various uh, agribusiness environment that we need to take into account no now for this for this uh, for this particular session we will only discuss two modules i mean two lessons for module 2 
because this particular module also is divided into four four uh, lessons that means to say if we are done with the uh, with two uh, modules what is uh, what remains is the uh, uh, no, the remaining uh, uh, part of the that part, this particular module so that we we are targeting that after two meetings of our class we would be able to finish this module okay and then go with module three uh, for again no so uh, for the rest of the period we will be discussing on two lessons on the agribusiness uh, environment now the first lesson is on economy investment incentives and challenges okay we discuss the economy investment incentives and challenges so when we talk about uh, economy or uh, investment incentives it we cannot avoid to discuss about what is the relationship between business development and also economic development okay uh, it says here that the dynamics and vibrancy of business activity depends largely on the economic development activities in the country okay if the economic development in the country is very vibrant or very dynamic it will also affect on the business activity okay so there, there are these two factors the economy and the business development actually reinforce each other okay now the agribusiness or business and economic development are related are relay are related methods of creating economic activity however they are they are different concepts and each one has a unique goals and strategies no so that means uh for business development very unique ang yang uh goal for economic development it's also very unique in, in in terms of goal but they are very much related so let's take for example the first one business development now business development is driven primarily by profits okay so that means uh business is intended for profit okay for profit and then we discussed that in uh, manager economics that uh there are various uh, concepts of profit okay profit is what we call as the concept or the term profit is we call it uh say for example amoral amoral not immoral no but amoral amoral meaning to say Profit is not bad for as long as you use it uh, logically and to accomplish a certain welfare uh, end, for example. Because the moment you desire for something, you want something, and then uh, that particular good or service will be provided to you from uh, coming from certain origin and be provided to you through a certain means. Now, that particular service is provided, I mean, uh, pro uh, particular service which is actually done in order to be able to provide that particular good at your table for example is actually uh, motivated by profit now the profit is just a natural result of being able to serve customer or client needs okay so again business development is driven by profit now, that means the the mission of business development is to generate a uh, profit otherwise if you uh, go into business and you are not expecting to earn something it's not a business at all it's purely service and it's purely charitable activity no now there are there are various uh, focuses on on uh, on business development one is business development focuses on markets okay it generates profit because it serves a certain market so that means the focus is identifying business opportunities in the marketplace okay the goal is to generate profits by creating business to exploit market and business opportunities so that means to say profit is just a natural result of being able to serve market needs okay so it should be the market needs serving market needs first and then it will naturally generate profit because as you serve the market you also de develop or generate value addition now that value addition or margin is actually part of your profit not only that it focuses on market 
business development also creates business. Okay, it creates business. Profits, profits are generated by creating business. These business are located in geographic location where business can generate most profit. And the unique characteristic of various sites are examined, no? depending on the location. So creating business, you generate a profit. Now, what is the purpose of business? The business primarily serving the needs of the customers. Okay. Now, another is business development originates in private sector. Okay. It actually originates uh, in, in private sector because beneficiaries of the business are individual owners or private owners. Usually originates in the private sector of the economy. Okay. Otherwise, kung delegi kan sa private sector, ang business, it is always like a public, no? A public and it's, ju it, it's just for welfare, no? Welfare, not for profitable uh, or silly purpose. Okay. Another, it answers it answers to investors. In other words, uh, when there is business, there is always uh, investor. There are always investors. Investors are owners of business and receive profits generated by business. Okay? So investors are owners that drive the business development process. No? These are owners that drive the business development process. These are investors. You Either you invest in terms of time, invest in terms of money, invest in terms of many any other assets, for example. So it is it is uh, it has a sharp contrast with economic development because economic development dry is driven by job creation. Okay, remember business is driven by profits, but economic development is driven by job creation. Okay, employment or job creation. The mission of economic development is to create jobs, generate property tax revenues, and facilitate economic activity. Okay. So the focus is a specific geographic area and creation of economic activity in a geographic area. Okay. If there is very dynamic economic activity in a certain geographic location, now business development would just flourish naturally. For example, in an intersection in a corner, I mean, in highway intersection in a particular highway in the center of the mountain, there is intersection, highway intersection. It is just but natural that that particular uh, intersection point will create business opportunities because the highway and the intersection of people is actually an economic activity. When they converges, many other factors, it will create, it will naturally create business. The goal is to generate economic activity by attracting business to locate in a certain geographic area. That is economic development. So the goal is to attract business to locate in a geographic area. So that uh, if you provide highway, you provide uh, buildings, you provide services, that is an economic development. Now that particular, or those particular facilities will now attract business. Okay? That is... Uh, if there is no economic development, now normally it won't. I mean, it cannot create, it cannot attract business uh, location. So that's why it's it's very important. No. Another is economic development also is uh, uh, driven by profits. Of course, business profitability is actually secondary in importance also. Okay. Now. When we say that business profitability, okay, when we say business profitability, it attracts business, it originates from the private sector and answers to community, no? So business profitability, for example, is like it, it is of secondary importance. However, economic development improves what is PP, okay? Purchasing power of the community, okay? Economic development for chasing power of the community. What do you mean by that? If there is job created, naturally the people, the 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 the, the citizens or the the constituencies of that particular uh, 
geographic location if they are if they are if they are properly employed they will generate or they will they will have income in themselves and they can afford to buy something for uh, whatever purpose in their household and that is what we mean by improving purchasing power that means to say they cannot afford to uh, transact business with private business establishment so it answers the community uh, of, in terms of whatever needs the community might have no some people so people in the community drive the economic activity or economic development process and creates an environment conducive to business okay if there is job there then there is purchasing power they can now transact business with uh, investors providing the service okay that's why you can observe for example anywhere when there is for example a factory that is established it is it is just but natural that within the vicinity of the factory of that factory it will attract business to to flourish because the people working in that know in that factory will be wanting for certain service either transportation food and what have you then it will naturally create a business opportunity okay so that means uh, in in a know in a particular I know in a particular uh, economic system in a particular society you can have a a circular flow model of the economy that the economy actually uh, creates some uh, uh, various uh, transactions or provide facilitates the various transaction within the market and that market actually what uh, generates or stimulates business activity now what are the two markets in a mark in a set in a market system circular flow of a market system the two markets are we have the resource market and the product market okay now resource market what are these resource market when you talk of resource you have labor okay these are resource you have also capital like for example utilities and services uh, infrastructure these are capital uh, goods and of course labor and whatever uh, uh, monetary capital these are resource market now the the product market are actually one these are actually finished goods no the product market are products that are uh, for to serve the needs of the of the public of the constituents either food uh, feed or uh, any basic uh, items now in a in a resource market you will notice that uh, the resource market if uh, there are people for example and capital goods if it is provided no if it is provided okay if it is provided you have here the the lower arrow here resource market transacts business in the or resources transacts business in the resource market and they will provide that resource resources to the business like for example uh, putting a factory people will go there and apply for job okay now if they work there in the in the factory naturally they will earn what they will earn uh, their wage and then when they will earn their wage uh, they will also after working at the end of the day they will receive money to buy goods and services to transact in the product market or to engage in transaction at the product market okay now these goods and services okay the the i know the 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 business establishments pay the salaries okay of the of the goods and services provided to them and they buy the the workers buy products for for food and other items and they actually this this they bought something and it is paid for in terms of actual money so that means to say as they as they offer their service it will be paid in terms of salaries to the resource owner and then they will also buy goods at the product market now the 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 product market also as they receive the money after after this people buying them they it will also be generated as what as revenue or income or sales among a business owners 
okay? And then down the line, the goods and services also that they uh, uh, actually buy from the product market, it will become expenditure or payment for goods and services on the part of the household, okay? They bring the goods and services to the household, and after paying, they pay the the product owners with the no, with the money, and it with the payment becomes revenue or sales of the product, a finished goods owners. So that is just actually the circular flow model. In other words, if you if you view this very in a micro situation, you are looking at exchange uh, money or resources exchanging hands every day every moment, every second, or every hour of the day, transacting various forms of like market transactions in the, both in both resource market and the product market. A very, very specific, for example, is it, uh, example, if you hire somebody to work in your farm, maybe for one day or in your house for one day, maybe the lavandera, no? You will work for one day, they receive their pay. Uh, they receive their payment at the end of the day. Now that money paid to them will be used to buy rice, fish, and meat or whatever in the product market. And then that the payment that they they pay becomes income for the business establishment. But actually, the payment that they pay becomes also the expenditure in the house. So again, they work again and so on and so forth. The circular flow. Uh, follows in that fashion, okay? So it's, it's, this circular flow model actually illustrates a classic relationship between business and the, econo and the economy, no? Business and business development and economic development, okay? Now, in between the business development and economic development, there is a very important catalyst, okay? Catalyst that will actually connect the business activity and also economic growth. And that is what we call as entrepreneurship. No? Entrepreneurship or the ability to make decisions in terms of uh, generating business or uh, making, uh, generating or coming up or crafting or venture ideas. Now, entrepreneurship is a catalyst in terms of uh, multiplying investment and also multiplying, creating multiplier effect for economic growth. You will notice that entrepreneurship actually is affected by what? You have socioeconomic environment, economic, uh, economic characteristic, policy environment, uh, the, the export or the foreign sector, and then of course economic policy of the country. If it is favorable, now in entrepreneurship will really uh, what will really catalyze investment climate, no? Investment climate. So that as we get more investment, it will also trigger on more economic development in, the, in a particular country. So entrepreneurship is a catalyst of economic growth. That's why we, the more entrepreneur in a particular economy, the faster the multiplier effect for the for economic growth, no? so it is one very important, uh, one very important like indicators, if of economic growth or economic vibrant econ economic activity, if we provide a favorable environment to create entrepreneurs in that area, no? so that is very very important. Now we go to investment incentives and challenges. Now, what do you mean by investment incentives? Okay. First, investment incentives. After that, what are the challenges for uh, investment climate? Okay. Now, agribusiness and food system encompass the entire range of activities involved in the production, processing, marketing, consumption, disposal of goods at the that originates from agriculture, including food and non-food products. No? So that's almost like the agribusiness and food system. Okay, it involves all gamut of activities and entities connected in the production, processing, marketing, and also 
processing, I mean marketing, and even uh, log logistical uh, facilitation for food and non-food products, including livestock, aquaculture, and forestry. No, so agribusiness, in fact, has a very, very broad focus. No? So these are also the whole extent of product and services that needs to be incentivized in order to develop business development activities okay so uh, uh, that is uh, very important in the agribusiness uh, situation now investing in agribusiness and food system can produce multiplier effect for various sectors such as agro service and manufacturing industries thus contributing to security and overall economic activity of the country so there is a need that to in, to to provide in, in incentives to uh, investing in agribusiness because it has a very uh, broad based multiplier effect no so how do we provide incentives especially private investment no? now, private investment are those that generate private profit okay there are also public investment that is for what for providing uh, a good competitive environment no? there is uh, also what we call as public investment On the other hand uh, public investment that is investment done by the public sector or the government okay now if you say public investment investment that generates non-exclusive and non-excludable okay well, non-excludable, that means to say you cannot privatize that particular activity. Like, for example, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, building infrastructure like uh, canals or like maybe flood control. How can you, uh, no, how can you privatize that? Well, if you build highway, you can privatize by uh, collecting uh, tool. You have the tool plaza. But what about if you build, uh, for example, a uh, canal for flood control or embankment to control uh, tidal waves or tidal waters from flushing into the city? These are not, these are not, this is, this is not, uh, this cannot be privatized because anybody can use that particular facilities at any time. You cannot private, you cannot prevent anybody from really uh, enjoying the benefits of uh, flood control project. Hence, it is provided by the public sector in order to protect private investment so that business will be attracted to uh, come in. Okay, so it's non-exclusive, non-excludable. Okay, so these are investment, for example, in technological research and development. So uh, R&D, so you have to have investment there so that you provide the information to everybody so that they will also improve in their business uh, you know, activity. Public investment are usually done by the government, either private or non-profit, private organizations, okay, non-profit. Now, the other thing is, after knowing about investment, we go into how do we you know, incentivize how do we provide incentives for investment? Now, first, we need to understand what are the kinds of investment. Now, uh, the starting point of incentives for public investment is the provision of favorable policy environment for investment. So, for public investment, the, the government will provide good, okay, good or favorable policy environment. That means the government will provide, uh, uh, for example, platform for transparent competition. The government will provide, for example, uh, infrastructure like uh, uh, utilities like water or something like that. Okay, so that this one can can benefit everybody. This could be in a form of economic and non-economic instrument for domestic, but as well as also foreign direct investment as well. No? Now, in the Philippines, the mother of all policy instrument is the constitution. 
Okay? In other words, to provide incentives, we provide the policy environment. Now, the, the, the overall or the mother of all policy instrument for investment is actually spelled out in the Constitution. Okay, that should always be the starting point. Like, for example, in our Constitution, uh, Philippine Constitution, Article 12 of the 1987 19, uh, um, Philippine Constitution, it is that Article 12 says about the national economy and the patrimony of the nation. Okay, it also uh, spoke about uh, um, who can engage in business and capitalization of business also. And it talks about what is the role of foreign nationals, okay? Now, another uh, source of policy instrument is specific investment incentives as spelled out by the Board of Investment uh, in, in what we call as the incentives and also investment priority plan, okay, investment priority plan. Now, I'm going to just uh, give you the the newly approved investment priority plan I have here in this picture. This is the new uh, approved in, uh, this is a newly approved uh, in, the, uh, in the, in 2020, actually. This is our uh, investment priority plan. And the investment here provides us with incentives. What are those priority uh, investment? And what are those with incentives and what is what kind of incentives so this is a, a new document of our, our our from the book from the board of investment so i will provide you this one a copy so that you will not you will also be guided in terms of uh, what are the priorities of investment no so it's a, a forwarded copy and then with that we will view for example what are embedded no in the investment priority plan now, the incentives for BOI registered investment under IPP or the uh, IPP or the what we call as you have the investment priority plan, which is from 2017 to 2022. So these are these are the ano uh, these are the areas omnibus investment code from income tax holiday to uh, simplification of customs procedure, etc. No? And then you also have the revised forestry code of the Philippines, Philippine Mining Act or something like that. No? And then these are also the uh, uh, publishing or uh, book publishing and industry development. In other words, if we, publi if we publish book that is of natural or national interest, mga critical kaayo ng mga important ka mga libro na ay provision na sa EO226 and the in the in the recent IPP nga tax free kung mo import mo import ana kay aron makabasa ning atong mga mga scientist no so there is also what we call as downstream oil industry deregulation act okay under the IPP so the magna carta magna carta of disabled person etc so these are the contents of the investment incentives uh, priority plan, investment priority plan of the, of the government. Now, I'm going to provide you a copy of this. I will send it to your email for your file. No? Now, we also have the Renewable Energy Act okay, provided also in the, in the IPP for, for, until 2022. And then you have the Tourism Act of 2009. No? And then you also have other different components of the investment priority plan in the ipp what you can see there are priority investment of the country and if you invest something there is always what you call as incentives either taxation incentive either uh, duty incentive or uh, other forms of incentives or tax holidays perhaps no the other side of investment incentive is promotion and attraction of fdis or foreign direct investment. By the way, the faster the FDI grows in an economy, the more effective the policy environment. In other words, our ability to attract foreign investment. Okay, our ability to attract foreign investment. Now, FDI will spin off further translating fresh capital fund infusion 
to a proportionate expansion of the productive capacity of the country. Okay? That is why, as we have said, this, there is really a need to amend our the provisions of our constitution you know, from the business and economic perspective or side. It is really logical to uh, and uh, also not only logical but imperative, no? necessary na good to amend the constitution on this particular aspect because under the 1987 constitution, foreigners are only limited to 40% of capital ownership or investment ownership into our country. In other words, the, the business activities in the country is only for the Filipinos. Ug na foreigner, 40% regyo ng ilang ownership. In other words, all business activities in the country should be made majority owned by Filipinos. No problem without that. There is no quarrel about it. But as time goes by, no, as time goes by, we already have the, uh, found out that there are services and certain, uh, like uh, certain part of our economic investment climate that Filipinos are constrained to develop and to expand our capacity because there are those that require either technology which we do not have okay there are those that require uh, uh, capital uh, capital technology that we do not have and also there are those that require really huge amount of money to to spin off the investment especially in if that particular investment is a formative investment for example how do we ano, how do we go into how do we uh, how do we uh, exploit how do we for example uh, how do we uh, what can uh, uh, exploit or tap our mineral resources or for example our fuel reserve or you have natural resources if our natural resources is uh, located down deep into the ocean of surrounding islands, for example, in the country. Now, the Philippines, for example, is limited in terms of technology to be able to reach down deep into the ocean and drill there and, you know, suck up whatever natural gas or uh, fossil fuel found in there, which is very rich in our country. We are constrained to do that because, simply because we, we lack the technology, the equipment to do that, and we also lack the money. But that particular good is very important. That's why in, 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 in the process of developing that we have to partner with those who has the technology and, of course, who has the capacity in terms of money. Okay, but for other type of business, highly specific on quality, on ano, for example, vaccine development. If we rely upon our own technology, vaccine. But if we strategically align with countries who have the technology and allow them to invest the vaccine technology and allow Filipinos to learn from the technology, but the thing is the exchange there will be, they they would have a a larger share of the capitalization of that particular particular business, then it is for the for the general welfare of the Filipinos and our our economy. Then it's okay, no? It's okay to really open that to relax that restriction in foreign ownership to a certain extent that will also allow us to develop our our economy. But for other services, that is naturally. We, we really have the, the capacity, it should be regulated as, uh, as it was stated in the 1987 Constitution. So this time, that is an imperative in our... In our ano. That's why within the ASEAN region, even within ASEAN, including Japan and China, kita na lang ang nag-stick lang yapon ang 40% lang yun ang foreign company. And what happens, Ang Vietnam na overtaken nato sa Vietnam, Malaysia has overtaken us uh, many years ago, and of course Thailand. And it's really at high time. Kaya sa Vietnam, pwede na ang foreign ownership dako, 
no bisa nga nagdikan ko as much as 70 to 80 percent owned by foreign ano but the the local scientists must have free access to that technology and of course the ano the, there is a transparency in the transaction so that at the end of the day we would be able to ano we would be able to develop our economy okay so that's very important in our in our economy so i hope that can prosper as an amendment in the constitution so you have here a graph from 2001 to 2015 you have here fdis no fdis are uh, flowing no? uh, flowing within the uh, no, uh, into the philippine economy the world there is growing fdi but in our in our ano uh, in the in the philippines it's just not catching up with the amount of fdi this is the world fdi but in in the philippines you, we only have fdi as far as asean and then you fdi as far as china no di man sila kasulod og maayo because they are only allowed 40% and that 40% is not even uh ano uh, capital goods it's not even technology 40% is just purely money but what can the money do no kung dili ni po sila i-allow nga uh, increase ang ilang Uh, capital equipment na gamiton dere sa ato kay ang ilang ipapalit sa ato ang capital ko tay kwarta so i better nga i-invest na lang nila di po ta masugod kay ang atong constitution nagrestrict ra og 40% so no go no no go kana siya nga ano kana siya nga direction so another thing is while we have the desire to attract investment into our country or any country for that matter There are challenges also happening. Okay, what are the challenges that constrain investment to freely flow in a particular economy? Okay, these are the following challenges. One is they have the rise in fundamentalism or extremism. Okay, na mga kung kaayo, no? And then you have also maritime disputes across nations. Kaya ng West Philippine Sea. Abi na tong China ra, di mo kay China ra ang na involved yah. Na may Malaysia, na ay Taiwan, na ay uh, na pay uh, Vietnam, na pay Indonesia. China lang ang na na picture out na to, no? China lang because China is a common na uh, kuan sa tanan. But actually, they are also very uh, ano, very uh, uh, very well an active party in the. Uh, maritime disputes of the West Philippine Sea, no? So that is also one thing. So uh, that is uh, actually no one is going to invest on, for example, oil exploration, natural gas exploration, in in our West Philippine Sea because that particular area is disputed. Baka mamaya magkakulo na na yun. Kuman ni mong investment, no? So that is very clear, no? Around the world, there is a growing threat of terrorism. So that is again another, ano, okay? And terrorism this time is not only uh, by arms. Terrorism can also be biological terrorism, perpetrated by extreme religious fundamentalists. Uh, you can see, you can even hear from the news that in the Middle East, wala hunong ang pangyong mga terroristic activities, and it's already exported outside of the Middle East. Middle East, no. Generally, Middle East is will probably continue to be a region of instability, so that this and many other similar incidents are really creating serious, serious deterrent and obstacle to vibrant and productive investment climate of any particular country like the Philippines. No? Another another uh, like constraint to investment, no challenges to investment is climate change. Climate change will continue to challenge. Continue to challenge our investment climate because there are those that are uh, highly vulnerable to climate change that are also attractive to investment this time. But only time will tell when will this become like, for example, uh, when will this impact on climate change happen that will already be, be more become that will already become a uh, That will discourage investment in that particular area. There are many, ano, there are many, uh, for example, uh, 
uh, projections and forecasts. For example, if uh, temperature will increase this much, and then there is a uh, increase in sea level across oceans, now naturally a lot of uh, no, a lot of uh, flatlands will be inundated by water. Okay, as they have said. Uh, more than one half of Bangkok will be submerged to water if the sea level rise will go as much as, like for example, one meter or been less than a meter from its usual level this time. No, so there are already indications that it is actually happening. No, climate change is really a challenge. No, so so that is actually uh, module two point one. Okay, now for our enough for our for your learning task. Okay, it is an internet internet enough uh, web web search for you web search. Now you you have to search because we are talking about RR ratio or we are talking about investment. Okay, we are talking about investment. Now I'm going to assign to you. And try to research the so Google or whatever. Read a certain book about what is this reserve requirement ratio. Okay. Now the 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 central bank will always adjust the reserve requirement ratio. Okay. Reserve requirement ratio. That means to say, uh, it, it's the central bank that controls the monetary, uh, no, monetary uh, policy of the government. If the central bank will increase the reserve requirement for foreign currency, okay, if the central bank will increase, naturally it will absorb money in the economy to uh, beef up its reserve requirement. It is actually money put on reserve in the central bank. Right now, we have a a uh, a uh, positive reserve of one hundred ten. I think 111 billion US dollars in the central bank. No? Naka reserve na dito. Why, why are they doing that? Because they want to have uh, a healthy cash flow for the economy. Baka mamaya na ay mga, mga, muna ay mga, mga emergency nga pangangailangan na ipaliton, ay paliton ng pagkaon, paliton ng vaccine. At any given time, wala tayo ipalit because wala tayo uh, pundong kwarta reserve requirement. So this uh, these are uh, money that is put on reserve by the government. Now, if the government will say, "Gamayan ako," we will reduce the reserve requirement. Now, the central bank will actually control all banks also. No, kadangla na apoy reserve dito sa mga banko, mo follow sa reserve requirement sa ano sa central bank. Kung may ngon sila nga, decrease nila ang ano. They will decrease the reserve requirement. What will happen? They will unload money into the economy. So there is so much money in the economy. But if they say they will, we will increase the reserve requirement, they will absorb all money in the economy. Mugamay ang money in circulation. Okay? That's theoretically, conceptually, that's how it works. Now, research on that and say, uh, Illustrate or probably discuss a possible, maybe two pages, no? Illustrate and, and discuss the effect of RR ratio on the Philippine economy. No? You research, ma, ma, ma Google mo na ninyo. Just discuss whatever you can, you have in mind. You can also uh, have some newspaper clippings, but it's easier to you know, research them in the in Google, you know, what is reserve requirement ratio and how does it work? You know? So that is our, you know, our like uh, learning task. I want you to uh, submit that, sub, uh, submit this actually um, the, this coming this coming Friday, di pa. Next Friday, di ba? Ningingon ko sa inyo nga ang sa module one nga ano maupay atong maupay inyong isubmit sa next Friday. That means this particular ano this particular like uh, in, uh, learning task will be submitted the week after. Okay, I will keep on announcing when are you going to submit this. 
Okay, I'm just discussing to you this particular uh, the the task involved in terms of complying to this activity, no? This activity. Now let's come to uh, no, let's come to module two point two. Or no, lesson 2.2. Okay. Now, in lesson 2.2, it talks about technological development. Okay. You have investment and challenges, 2.1. Another very important, uh, uh, like, uh, environmental factors of agribusiness, okay, is technological development. Kung na technological change, what will happen to agribusiness, so that's something like that. No? Now, the overall motivation in technology adoption and or application in many business enterprises is the way in which a particular organization is benefited by it. Okay? Mu adapt of technology kung maka benefits organization. Precisely, that is always the case. Okay? Now, MIT or MIT or Massachusetts Institute of Technology define innovation as technology plus benefits. Okay, so that means to say, technology. If there is clear benefit that you can make use of that technology, then the whole package of benefits plus using that of using the technology is actually what innovation is all about. If you have a technology but you don't know exactly how you benefit from there, then relative to you, there, it's not an innovation. Okay? It's not an innovation because it, it can only be an innovation if that technology benefits a certain business uh, operation. It can either cut down on cost or increase production or what or whatever effect would that be. So, what makes a technology attractively adaptable to business or industries? It is the innovation that it can provide. Okay? Because technology plus benefits is actually innovation. It's innovation that motivates people to adapt to technology. Okay? Now, what about benefits? Okay? Benefits can come in either monetary or non-monetary. Okay? Can either... Uh, I know, uh, simplify the work that needs to be done, simplifying by uh, cut, cutting, short cutting or cutting short the probably the growing period, uh, simplifying the work in terms of spraying, simplifying the work in terms of diagnosis. These are many other uh, benefits that can be derived. Everything, it will always have some direct or indirect effect on productivity where it impact on financial bottom lines of the enterprise. Okay? Kung makasave siya o labor, kung makasave siya o capital, then it will always impact on financial bottom lines of the company. And that's benef that is benefit. No? Now, what about technology? Technology helps business in a number of ways. Okay? Technology helps a business in a number of ways. Either by... Uh, like, for example, improves communication, optimize production, helps in inventory management and financial record keeping. So technology can do any of these things. Probably improve in the diagnosis or maybe uh, cutting short the time, the turnaround time from planting to harvesting. You know? Who would have thought that maybe... 10 years ago, to be able to, to, uh, to grow or to be able to uh, attain 100 kilograms of live weight for hogs would take us about six months, six to seven months before. But thanks to the development or improvement in feed and feeds and feeding technology this time, an improvement in genetics also of uh, the hugs that even in three to four months you can already you know attain 100 uh, kilogram live weight very simply 
very straightforwardly and also simply can be done by the current technology. Can you imagine the savings in terms of feed expense and of course labor? That is so huge. So it really is very important innovation or as due to the technology. No? Now, in let's talk about improvement in business communication. Okay, <coughs> it could be internal or external business communication. So if it can speed up communication like through cell phones and through uh, whatever means that it can what improvement in communication in terms of speed it can also uh, expedite or makes decision making uh, faster okay so it can also provide decision making in terms of a uh, supplying more information so that in so that decision making can be information based and that is improvement in business communication okay <clears throat> Yeah, if you decide on something and your business partner is somewhere, uh, <coughs> for example, in the other countries, it would it would take time before you are able to get the feedback. But this time, in in minutes or in seconds, you can talk to them and make the decision right away whether to prevent or to to let go of a certain situation. You can make the decision far more faster. That's improvement in business communication. Another is, in, it, it actually enhances opportunities for marketing. Note that using technology for communication is not the only solution that can be and can be problematic for business if certain type of interaction could be better facilitated by face-to-face, -face, okay? Okay, there are also decisions that can really be more facilitated by face-to-face -face discussion but in in situations where we can do with uh, virtual then why not use virtual so there is very important uh, no, very important the judgment whether to use a uh, high-speed technology uh, for improving communication relies on the person or the entrepreneur himself Technology enhances market opportunities by communication. Even, for example, uh, for example, uh, in the medical science, no? in the medical science, they can do the surgery by remote uh, control. A, a specialist from India doing a surgery in Singapore or maybe a specialist in the, in the United States doing a surgery in Manila that can be done, like for example, uh, uh, remotely, no? using the computer technology. And it will be supervised by specialists in the Philippines. But the one doing the surgery is in the other country. That can be done. But it took a lot of really simulations to perfect that particular uh, particular technology no so that these are some of the uh, these are some of the uh, benefits of improving business communication okay now that actually also ends up with module two that actually we are now with halfway with this particular lesson okay uh, with this particular module we have discussed module one and module uh, module module two Lesson one, uh, two point one and two point two. Okay, now our learning task for this activity is that we will have a a a, uh, a chapter quiz or a module quiz. Now the quiz here, okay, the quiz here will be actually embedded into the module exam. Okay, so what I mean is that. Ang learning task in module 2.1 and uh, 2.2, ang learning task niya, to ara na ma-appeal dito sa long exam after the module. Okay? <coughs> after the module. After we finish this this module sa Wednesday, okay, we will finish this next week, kaninga module, module 2. 
next week, Wednesday. That means the next Wednesday, we will have the exam for module 2. Now, the exam for module 1 will be given either Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, depending, because I'm going to email to you. Okay? <laughs> that means we will have the exam, the module exam for module 1 next week, either Tuesday or Thursday, or it could be given uh, like uh, Wednesday. Wednesday sa uh, buntag, submit pagkapon, depending. So that is going to be uh, no, uh, more fitting to you. But let me ask you also, which would you prefer? Would you prefer to have the exam uh, given in the evening and then you submit in the morning? Or given in the morning, you submit in the in the uh, in the afternoon, maybe in the evening. Wh which do you think would you prefer? Ning na lang, sir, to submit for the morning. Ah, okay. yes, sir. I agree with that also, sir. Okay, so it will be given in the evening. It will be emailed to you early evening to be submitted in the morning. Okay. I, 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 I will take note of that. So with that, I know, with that uh, note, I will uh, stop from here. And also, uh, that will be the end of our, I know, our uh, uh, class for this, uh, I know, this, uh, this Friday. No? So I will uh, 